Hello, my name is Stephen Daniel with the Avaya Serviceability Engineering team. This video is about how you can generate a self-signed certificate for your Secure Access Link policy server. Before we begin, keep the following points in mind about generating your self-signed certificate. Using an SSL certificate is required when integrating your cell gateway with your cell policy server. This procedure applies to cell policy server release 1.5. Integration applies to any release of cell gateway. This includes all 1.x and 2.x releases. The cell policy server uses a default port of 8443 for SSL communication and is what we will use for this tutorial. Also, please make sure you have the following information or have completed any of the relevant tasks below before proceeding. You will need the IP address of your cell gateway and policy server, the root login for your cell policy server, host entries to both your cell gateway and your policy server, and finally you will need to create an SSL directory under the cell policy server home directory. So let's begin. Our first step in generating our certificate is gaining command line access to our policy server with root level permissions. As you'll see here, I am already logged into my policy server as root. Now because we'll need the fully qualified domain name of our policy server before we can generate our certificate, it's a good idea to have that handy as mentioned in the requirements slide. If you do not have yours noted, you could also simply view your Etsy host file real time and make note of it here. I'll go ahead and execute the command cat space forward slash etc forward slash hosts just to double check mine. Please take a moment to do so as well and make note of yours if you haven't done so already. In order to execute the command that will generate our certificate, we'll need to use a script by the name key tool which is provided with the Java runtime environment that comes bundled with the policy server. So here we'll do a cd space forward slash opt forward slash avaya forward slash sal in caps so that's capital S capital A capital L forward slash policy forward slash jre forward slash bin. Go ahead and press enter. Now if you issue the command ls you should see the script listed below. Now that we're in the proper directory, let's go ahead and execute the command to generate our certificate. For simplicity, I've pre-populated the full command, but I've not yet pressed enter. Please enter the command as you see it here, and I will describe each parameter as you enter it. Beginning with dot slash key tool, this is just standard Linux usage of executing a script, minus alias, this is used as an alternate reference for the certificate so here it's common to enter the fully qualified domain name of the server. Minus gen key. This is a subcommand to the key tool script, and it is used to generate both the public and private key pair that will be used for encryption. Minus key ALG. This parameter defines the cryptographic algorithm used by the certificate. Here we must use RSA. Minus key size. This parameter defines the bit strength of the encryption. Here we must use 1024. Minus validity. This option specifies in days how long the certificate is valid for prior to expiration. For this how to, we will use 3650 minus key store. This last parameter specifies the location of where you want to store your certificate. You can see here I've provided the path to my SSL directory and have given it the name identity.jks. Go ahead and confirm all of these details on your command line, and once having done so, press return and we'll move on to the next step. You can now see we are being prompted to define a password. For this tutorial, I have decided to use Avaya Mentor 123. I will enter that now and press return. Now we're still not finished as there is one sequence left before our certificate is created. We must provide all of these certificate details by answering a few short questions. Again, for simplicity, and to illustrate what must be provided, I have stepped through each question below while pre-populating my answers, having pressed return after each one. So let's begin with the first question. What is your first and last name? Now, despite what this question is asking for, this in fact needs to be the fully qualified domain name of your policy server. Next question, what is the name of your organizational unit? For this question, simply enter the name of your organization or department within your company. Next question, what is the name of your organization? Here you will want to enter the name of your company. Next question, what is the name of your city or locality? 
I will enter Highlands Ranch for mine because that's where my policy server is located. Moving on, what is the name of your state or province? Now I'm in Colorado, so I will go ahead and enter the two letter code for my state, which is CO. And finally, we're almost there. What is the two letter country code for this unit? Here you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and enter the two digit country code for your location. Now that we've answered all of the questions, we should be at a prompt asking us to confirm the details of our certificate by tapping the word yes. Please take a moment and look over all of the details one more time, and if everything looks correct, go ahead and type yes, then press enter here. Now lastly, you're going to be prompted to enter your password one more time to complete this task. I will go ahead and enter mine of Avaya Mentor123, and I will go ahead and press return. Assuming all has gone well, you will simply be returned to your prompt. For good measure, let's go ahead and validate that our certificate is where we expect it to be. I will execute the ls command followed by the path to my SSL directory. So I will do an ls space forward slash opt forward slash avaya forward slash sal it's capital S capital A capital L forward slash policy forward slash SSL. I will go ahead and then press enter. And as you can see, there is my identity.jks. The next thing we'll need to do is edit the server.xml configuration file. We'll do a cd space forward slash opt forward slash avaya forward slash sal, that's S A L, all in caps, forward slash policy forward slash tomcat5 with a capital T forward slash conf. C as in Charlie, O as in Oscar, N as in Nancy, F as in Frank, and then press return. Now, in this directory, if you issue the ls command, you should see a file by the name server.xml. It is this file that will make our edits too. Issue the command vi space server.xml. This will open the file in command mode. The first thing we need to do is locate the configuration block where we'll be making our edits. Let's go ahead and execute the global search by pressing the forward slash key. After pressing this key, you'll notice that your cursor is now positioned on the bottom left of your screen. This is indicating to us that it is ready to accept input. Please type the following text after the forward slash. Define a SSL, as I have done here. Confirm that you've entered your text just as you see it on screen, then go ahead and press enter. Doing this will take you to the location in the file that we'll need to edit. The first edit we'll need to make is to remove the open comment block. Start by pressing the letter J to move down one line. We're going to need to delete this line, and the way we do this in VI is by pressing the letter D two times in succession. I will go ahead and do that now, and as you can see, that line is now gone. The next parameter we'll need to change is titled secure and it is here where we instruct our server that we would like it to use a certificate by changing this value from false to true. Go ahead and press the forward slash key as we did earlier, then enter the text secure, then press enter as I've done here. As you can see, this positioned our cursor on the letter S of the word secure. Next, to move our cursor to the value false that we want to change, press the letter W two times. And finally, to change the word from false to true, enter the VI command CW. This will delete the word false, and you can go ahead and now type the word true on your keyboard. Once you have done this, press the escape key to ensure that the VI editor is back in command mode so we can move on and make our next edit. Moving on, we'll next need to edit the parameter key store file, which provides the absolute path to our certificate file. Again, using the VI search function, press the forward slash key, then type the word key store, then press return. From here, press the letter W to move forward one word, then press the letter L as in Lima to position your cursor on the first quotation marker. Next, press the letter A as in alpha to move your cursor one space forward where you can now type the path to your certificate. I will enter the path to mine by typing forward slash OPT, forward slash Avaya, forward slash sal, forward slash policy, forward slash SSL, forward slash identity.jks. 
Once you've entered the absolute path to your certificate, press the escape key to exit edit mode. The next edit will be to the parameter keystore pass, which defines the password required to open the file. Again, using the VI search function, press the forward slash key, type the word keystore, and then press return. From here, press the letter W to move forward one word, then the letter L to position your cursor on the first quotation marker. Next, press the letter A to move your cursor one space forward, and here, go ahead and type the password required to open your file. I will enter my password, which is aviamentor123. Go ahead and enter yours, and once you've done that, press the escape key to exit edit mode. Finally, we'll need to remove the end comment marker. Press the letter J to move down one line. We're going to need to delete this line by pressing the letter D two times in succession. I will go ahead and do that now, and as you can see, the line is now gone. At this point, all of our edits are complete, so we are now ready to save our work and exit VI. To do this, we'll need to enter the keys colon WQ exclamation. You can now see I've been returned to my prompt. Finally, the moment of truth has arrived. We're now going to go ahead and start a policy server and ensure that A, it starts up properly, and B, that it's bound to the proper port. Let's go ahead and move back to our policy server home directory by moving up two levels from our current directory. So we'll go ahead and go to our policy server home, and we're going to go ahead and list the contents of this directory. And here you're going to see that we have two scripts that control the policy server. We have shutdown.sh for stopping the server and startaps.sh for starting the server. We're going to want to issue the startaps.sh command. And once we've done that, a log file will be created that we can then inspect to make sure our server is up and running. We'll go ahead and view the contents of the log. I'll do a vi space startup.log. And what you're going to want to notice here in the log are three things. One, that you see a line that says initializing Coyote on 8443. Two, that you see initialization processed in so many milliseconds. And three, that you see it say starting service Catalina. If you see those, your service should be up and running. Now, just to make absolutely sure, we're going to want to go ahead and check the port binding. We'll go ahead and exit here, and we can issue the command lsof space minus i space colon 8443 press return and if you see something like what you see on the screen here then you can ensure that your server is up and running. We're now going to want to go ahead and log into our gateway UI with a security administrator level login. I'm going to go ahead and log into mine as root so I'll go ahead and provide the login and then the password and then I'll click log on. Now once logged in you're going to see a series of menus on the left. We're going to want to go ahead and click and expand the administration menu and then right down below, we're going to go ahead and click on the policy server link and make the edit required. I'm going to go ahead and click edit here to proceed with mine. You can see I've pre-populated my server and port. You'll have to enter those in your server. In addition to that, you're going to want to go ahead and click the use policy server checkbox and then provide those details. So once this is done, you want to then press apply. So I'll go ahead and press apply now. It's going to ask me to then restart my gateway services. I'll click the link above, press apply one more time to make sure that we're going to commit the changes. It's going to give you one final chance to confirm. We'll go ahead and press OK. And it takes a few seconds. It's going to go ahead and commit the changes. This task is now complete. So the final step is actually the easiest step. In this step, all we're going to do is confirm that our gateway is in fact communicating with our policy server. So let's go ahead and log into our policy server with our credentials. I'll go ahead and enter that here in mine. Go ahead and click the login button. Now once logged in, all we're going to have to do is go over to the right and click on Explore Device Groups. And if we have successful integration, what you should see now is a series of devices listed here in the Explore Device Groups section. In particular, you're going to go ahead and see your gateway and you should also see every managed device that's administered on your gateway. Thank you for your time today. We hope this information was useful. We welcome comments, questions, and feedback at mentor at avaya.com or on Twitter at avaya mentor. Thank you for choosing avaya.